This is Polly Murray. Um, Polly Murray is a legendary figure in uh, black history. Murray stayed in her bus seat doing a bus boycott long before um, Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King came on the scene. Um, Murray tried to get her law degree from UNC but was rejected because of race. And then she went to Howard University and got her law degree, but there she coined the term Jane Crow because she faced a lot of sexism uh, in, at Howard. Thurgood Marshall has called Murray's post-grad book the Bible of the Civil Rights Movement. And later, Murray became the first black woman ordained as an Episcopal priest. All through life, Polly Murray struggled with her sexual and gender identity um, and many believe that if alive today, Polly would identify as a trans man. Uh, in addition to all the other amazing things, uh, Murray was also an excellent poet and wrote a collection of poems called Dark Testament about uh, the black experience in America. And it is those that I will be reading today. Freedom is a dream haunting as amber wine, or words remembered out of time. Not Eden's gate, but freedom, lures us down a trail of skulls, where men forever crush the dreamers, never the dream. I was an Israelite walking a sea bottom. I was a Negro slave following the North Star. I was an immigrant huddled in ship's belly. I was a Mormon in search of a temple. I was a refugee, clogging roads to nowhere. Always the dream was the same. Always the dream was freedom. America was a new dream and a new world for dreaming. America was the vast sleeping gulliver of the globe. America was the dream of freedom, but the dream was lost when campfires grew the Bible twisted as white men threw the redskins back to mountain pass. The senses dulled with whiskey flask, the arrow broken by searing lead. Better to die, the red man said. The white slave ran away too soon, followed the path of dying moon, a face forgotten in frontier shack, where none asked questions and few turned back. Here was a place where a man could stand, holding free earth in scrawny hand. Here was a world where freedom was won by the hand on an ax, the hand on a gun. Free earth hungered for free men, but free men soon hungered for gold. Planters bargained with traders, traders bargained with slavers, slavers turned toward Africa, the dream was lost in the quest for gold. The men of Africa were stalwart men, tough as hickory deep in their primal forests, their skin the color of tree bark, ebony, bamboo, coconut, mango. Their hair was thick with jungle, their eyes were dark as star-fed night. They were sly and cunning, fearless and cool. They knew the cry of every forest bird and beast. Smelters of iron, carvers of wood and ivory, weavers and potters of intricate design, followers of the honey bird to the honey tree, hunters of antelope, lion, and elephant. Some were gentle tribes and some were fiercely brave. Warriors of the poison spear, testing their strength in battle man for man. And when they killed the foe, they ate his heart to make themselves invincible. Storytellers all, refusing to be hurried, who nightly by the village fires recalled their tribal history, evoked ancestral heroes, imbued their young with pride, and every task, no matter what its import, signaled a joyous song and tribal dance. O black warrior, Curl a dark spear of song, born on a night wind, piercing the sorrow-haunted darkness. Perpetual cycle of grief, cruel legacy of endless betrayal, 
frenzied anger beating against impenetrable walls of silence. Ours is no bedtime story children beg to hear. No heroes rode down the night to warn our sleeping villages. Ours is a tale of blood streaking across the Atlantic, from Africa to Barbados, from Haiti to Massachusetts, from Rhode Island to Virginia, from the red clay of Georgia to Requiem in Memphis, from swampy graves in Mississippi to the mor morgues of Detroit. Ours is a tale of charred and blackened fruit, a boarded harvest dropped from blazing bough, a tale of eagles exiled from the nest, brooding and hovering on the edge of sky, a somber shadow on this native earth, yet no faint tremor of her breast eludes the circle of our hungered eye. Black men, were safe when Tom Tom slumbered, till traders came with beads and rum, bartered and bribed on their slaver's quest, killed the watcher, silenced the drum. Villages screamed in headless horror, villages blazed with fiery eye, trapped lions roared no greater terror than man pinned back on burning sky. With one great throat, the forest thundered, with one vast body, their creatures fled, but man the hunter was now the hunted, bleeding fresh trails of dying and dead. Tethered beneath a slave ship's girth, the hours throbbed with dying and birth, foaming and champing in slime and dung, rumbling curses in a jungle tongue, torturous writhing of limbs that burst, whimpering children choked with thirst, vomiting milk from curdled breast, rat's teeth, sinking in suckling's chest. Slave ships plunging through the westing waves, grinding proud men into cringing slaves. Oh, running slaves is a risky trade. When you cross the path of government snail, they'll smell, they'll smell you five miles down the wind, for a slaver stinks like a rotting whale. And when they spy you, dump your cargo, shove the first black over the rail. He twists, he spins, he claws at the sun, he plummets down, dark dagger in the flood. He sucks in the others one by one, and the foam track crimsons with their blood. As glistening shark fins flash among, the blackheads bobbing on the wave, the sh slave ship flees and freedom is won, and churning torrent and fathomless grave. We have not forgotten the market square, malignant commerce in our flesh, huddled like desolate sheep, tumult of boisterous haggling. We waited the dreadful moment of dispersal. One by one, we climbed the auction block, naked in an alien land. Driven by whip's relentless tongue to dance and caper in the sun, ripple the muscles from shoulders to hips to show the teeth and bulge the biceps to feel the shame of a girl whose breasts are bared to squeeze of a breeder's fists. Sold, resold with the same coin, our unrewarded sweat had borne. Endless tearing, man rested from woman, warm and brown as sunflower heart, plucked up, thrust down in an untamed earth, uprooted, dispersed again. She was too brief a wife. She sits in frozen grief, and stares with mindless eyes at fatherless children crying in the night. Trade a king's freedom for a barrel of molasses. Trade a queen's freedom for a red bandana or Cherokee mulattoes in North Carolina or a Creole mistress in Louisiana. Sell a man's brain for a handful of greenbacks. Mark him up in Congress, he's three fifths human Mark him down in the record with mules and a mortgage. Sell him long, sell him short, cotton's a boomin'. Take a black's manhood, give a white god. Send him way down in the dismal woods where a black man's tears will not embarrass a white man's juleps and lofty moods. A black man down on his knees in the swamp grass sent his prayer straight to the white god's throne. Built him a faith, built a bridge to this god 
and God gave him hope and the power of song. Hope is a crushed stalk between clenched fingers. Hope is a bird's wing broken by a stone. Hope is a word in a tuneless ditty, a word whispered with the wind, a dream of 40 acres and a mule, a cabin of one's own and a moment to rest, a name and a place for one's children and children's children at last. Hope is a song in a weary throat. Give me a song of hope and a world where I can sing it. Give me a song of faith and a people to believe in it. Give me a song of kindliness and a country where I can live it. Give me a song of hope and love and a brown girl's heart to hear it. <laughs>